Welcome back. In the last video, we encountered a notion of um, matter being made up of these little tiny balls that are moving around randomly um, and vibrating all the time, moving all over the place, knocking into each other. And that notion came from the Greek philosopher Democritus back in 400 BC. And we looked at how we could have uh, used that to explain phenomenon um, in everyday life, such as diffusion. I like now to use that so-called atomic theory to um, <clears throat> look at another thing that we are familiar with, um, namely what we call the states of matter. So let me just write that down first. States of matter. <clears throat> now it seems that we can divide things into um, their shapes. If you look at a piece of ice, for example, it's got a fixed shape, and as long as it doesn't melt, it's um, going to stay in this same shape. So let's say you know it's minus 20 degrees Celsius, and the ice stays as an ice. So you see that the ice has a fixed shape. Something like that, we, as you may know, we call it a solid. Now as you increase the temperature and heat this piece of ice, it starts to melt. And eventually, all of it turns into something that flows around freely. And if I were to put the water in a cup, it would take the shape of the cup. So, so this, what we call state of matter, can take the shape of its container. So it takes the shape of a container and something like that we call a liquid. And if I heat this up even more, it will start to evaporate and turn into something that tends to fill all available space. So I just spread out and fill all available space. And something like that we call a gas. Now these are the three states of matter that we are most familiar with. There's a fourth state of matter, but um, I won't go into that because that only happens in very high temperatures like in the sun, for example. So what I like to do now is I like to see if I can use the atomic theory as expounded by Democritus to try to explain um, the, the properties of these states of matters, namely their shapes, just based on this notion that we have these tiny little atoms all moving around um, constantly in motion. Now to get a fixed shape solid um, I, we might imagine that we have these atoms arranged in a regular fashion and that they are all tightly bound together by strong forces in between them such that their shape doesn't change. So I've got strong forces between them and the atomic theory did say that they would have to have um, to be in constant motion so I'll just show them being in vibrating in place but unable to move apart so they vibrate in For a liquid, we might imagine that we want them to be able to slide so that they can take the shape of the container. So they need to be able to slide over each other such that they'll take the shape of the container. So they're not regular anymore. 
They're somewhat further apart. And the forces between them are now weaker so that they can slide over each other. So we've reduced the forces between them and they're now able to slide over each other. And of course they would probably have a little more energy. Since they've been heated up. Now if I heat this liquid up even further, I'd like them to be able to fill all available space. So we can imagine that these particles will now be moving freely, moving randomly, occasionally colliding into each other and then bouncing off each other and moving off to fill even more space. So they'll be moving at very high speeds. There'll be nothing to stop them from moving apart. So they'll bounce into each other, move apart, and fill all available space. So they collide. bounce off each other and eventually filling all available space. So that is how we might imagine the behavior of particles to be like in um, this three different states of matter. Now I brought up this notion of heat when I talked about the change um, between these three different states of matter and we're all familiar with the notion of how heat might be related to temperature. So a higher temperature might imply more heat. So the next thing we might want to do is we might want to look at how the temperature changes as an object changes from a solid state to a liquid state to a gaseous state. But before we do that, I like to make a more concrete definition of what temperature is. It turns out that one way of defining temperature is based on a measure of the speeds of these particles. Now this may be a new notion, but just hold that thought for in your head for a moment as we investigate what happens when we heat a, an object to change its state. Let's start by setting up an apparatus that could help us carry out this experiment. So I'd like to have um, some beaker in which I would probably place some ice. So I'll put some ice cubes in this beaker. And I'll stick a thermometer in it so I can measure its temperature. And of course to do this accurately you will probably when I have a more professional setup, but for the purpose of this illustration, I think this will suffice. And below that, I'll put a Bunsen burner to heat this ice. Next, what we could do is we could monitor how the temperature of the contents of this container changes as I heat it. So we're starting out with some blocks of ice and as I heat it the temperature will start to increase. Now why would the temperature increase? Well if we take this notion of temperature to be the measure of the speeds of particles as I heat it that heat energy is, is going to cause these particles to vibrate further. So the energy is being transferred into the particles, causing them to increase in the speed of their vibration hence the temperature increases. At some point, 
this ice is going to want to melt. Now in order to go from a solid and melt to a liquid, they're going to have to move slightly further apart and weaken the forces between them. So just increasing their speeds isn't going to do. Instead, what happens is that these bonds holding the particles together, these forces are weakened. So energy goes into these bonds to start weakening the bonds. And because of that, none of the energy is being absorbed by the particles, and hence the particles don't increase in speed. So if the particles don't increase in speed, the temperature does not change. And while they're melting, while they are in the process of melting, the temperature stays constant. None of it goes into the particles, they go into the bonds to weaken the bonds between them. And once they've all turned to liquid, there are no more bonds to be weakened, and so we have energy going to the particles, and they start to vibrate more, meaning their speed increases, and hence the temperature starts increasing again. Until again, the liquid wants to change into a gas. When it reaches this stage, once again, we'll need to weaken the bonds between them. And as you can see, there are no forces between the particles. So a lot of this energy is being absorbed to weaken the bonds between the particles causing it to evaporate and once they've all turned to gas the temperature of the substance can increase again because as you see now they're, they're moving at really really high speeds so higher speed equals higher temperature forget to mention that the x-axis on here is the time axis and what we've drawn here is what sometimes you might see called a heating curve it's the behavior of the change in temperature as the object changes its state from a solid to liquid to gas and these special temperatures at which the change of state takes place have names too so we call this the melting point of the substance um, and the temperature at which the object changes from a liquid to a gaseous state we call the boiling point for pure water the boiling point is 100 degrees celsius I'll write 100 here since we are using water as an example. And the melting point is called, uh, it's zero degrees Celsius. So you might have heard the terms, people say water boils at 100 degrees, or water melts, or ice melts at zero degrees Celsius. And this is what they mean by that. They mean that while it is in the process of changing its state, its temperature doesn't change because energy goes into weakening the bonds instead of increasing the speeds of the particles. Now we can also reverse this process and take a gas to a solid, I beg your pardon, a gas to a liquid and back down to a solid. In that case we'll get something called a cooling curve and the process is um, almost the opposite of this. In its gaseous states the particles have lots of energy as I cool it down, I take away this energy and so they slow down and when the speed of the particles decreases, the temperature decreases until they want to change into a liquid. At that point, I'm going to have to take energy out of the bonds and allow them to move closer together such that they can form an attraction with each other. So I'm no longer slowing the particles down 
but instead I'm bringing them closer together to form bonds and so since the particles the speed of the particles don't change the temperature don't change it doesn't change and I have the same situation here as I try to change them from a liquid into a solid as the temperature decreases the vibrations of the particles decreases and when I start taking energy out of the bonds to allow them to settle into each other the temperature doesn't change and that's when we say that the liquid is freezing and once it's completely frozen the particles can start slowing down even more taking the temperature further down and so we see that the temperature at which the object changes from a liquid to a solid namely when it freezes is the same as the temperature when it changes from a solid to a liquid namely when it's melting so the melting point and the freezing points are the same for a particular substance and so is the boiling point and the condensation point to conclude I like to give names to these changes that we've been talking about so when an object changes from a solid to a liquid we say that is melting and when it changes from liquid to gas it can either be boiling or evaporating we'll take a look at the difference between boiling and evaporating in a little while and when it changes from a gas to liquid we say that it's condensing and when it changes from sorry from a gas to liquid that's called condensing and from a liquid to a solid that is freezing so in this video we've looked at how we could use the atomic theory of Democritus to try to explain um, the changes in the states of matter the changes between solids liquids and gases in terms of the forces between the particles and the speeds of the particles and we also looked at an experiment to look at the temperature change when the f states of the matter start changing from one to another. In the next video, we'll look at a more sophisticated view of the atom.